Hey, hey, and welcome to the Work Smarter, Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, a.k.a. The Design Ninja. And this is the place where you can develop your ninja skills with Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, and more. So mapping is still very popular in the dojo, so I thought we'd nip back to maps in this particular movie and we'd have a look at making smarter markers. So this will work best in versions of CC and above, although you can do quite a lot of this in earlier versions. So I'm going to swap out to a new document now and I'm going to get my ellipse tool by tapping L on my keyboard and then I'm going to drag like so. Now if you're in an earlier version or you've got smart guys turned off then you'll need to hold down shift for this but otherwise you can just drag an ellipse like so and the smart guides will tell you when you've got a proportional shape. I'll zoom in on that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to tap A on my keyboard to get the direct selection tool and then I'm just going to drag across the bottom half of this circle like so. Notice I'm not dragging over the points just the strokes there that make that up. Once those strokes are selected and their endpoints are visible I'm going to tap S to access the scale tool and then I'm just going to mouse down it doesn't matter where you do that you can just mouse down and then I'm just going to push this up or out to the side a little bit like so just to kind of flatten out the sides more than anything else. Then I'm going to tap A again to get the direct selection tool once more and I'm going to click on the bottom most anchor point then come up to the control strip at the top and choose this first button next to convert which will change a curve to a corner point and when I do that you see I've got a nice pointy thing there and I'm going to use my down arrow on my keyboard to just change that shape like so. Perfect. I'm then going to tap V to get my selection tool. I'll just click away from that and then just reselect it like so. Okay, the next bit is best done in the appearance panel. Now that's over here on my layout, which is the essentials layout. If you can't find it or it isn't there, just go to the window menu and you'll find appearance there. And when you choose it, it will open up and reveal itself to you like so. So what I'm going to do first of all is change the fill color from this. So I'm going to click here next to the fill and I'll make this one blue. And I'm going to share a ninja tip for people who are hanging around in the dojo a lot. And here's your ninja tip. Okay, I'm going to hold down the shift key and click here and you'll see I get an alternate UI. So I get the color mixing interface there so I can use any of these different color models to mix a color. So if you just click ordinarily, it shows you the swatches panel, shift click, it shows you the color panel like so. Perfect. So now I've done that, I'm going to focus on the stroke. So I'll come up to the stroke in the appearance panel and I'm going to dial that up a little bit. So for me, it's kind of working here at about eight or nine points. Yours might be slightly different, of course, because it depends how big you drew the ellipse and all of the other bits there. Nine points for me works really, really well. So I'm going to hit return just to apply that. And then I'm going to use the stroke hyperlink here to access the stroke panel. First thing I want to do here is align that to the inside of the shape. So you see when I click that, it all moves and the stroke is now contained within the shape like so. The next thing I'm going to do is hit the full stop or period key on my keyboard and that will change that to a gradient. Actually, it just dismissed the dialog, but I'll do it again and you'll see it now changes that to a gradient stroke. And what I'm going to do here, this has the default white to black gradient on it. So I'm just going to change the angle because the moment it's just going across like so perfectly horizontally. So for me, it works best, I think, at about negative 55. So you can see I've got that just off center from the top and similarly with the shadow at the bottom. Let's go back to the appearance panel now. And what I'm going to do here is underneath stroke. So if you can't see it, there's a little disclosure triangle there and it will show you the opacity hyperlink there. If I click that, then I'm going to change the blending mode of the stroke 
okay, to overlay. And what that will do is it will make the color darker where there's black and lighter where there's white. So there you go. I've got a nice kind of beveled effect to go with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw another ellipse. So I'm going to tap away from that with my selection tool just to deselect it. And then I'm going to tap L to get the ellipse tool and D to set the default fill and stroke, which should be white fill, black stroke. Now the stroke here is still in front. So it still has focus. If you look at the toolbox here, I actually don't want to stroke on this. So I'm going to hit the slash key just to remove the stroke. And then I'm just going to come out and hold down Alt and Shift together and draw an ellipse like so. There we go, perfect. Now that's done, what I'm going to do is, if you want to, by the way, you can just use the arrow keys to nudge that around, but I think that's pretty good where it is on mine. I'm going to select both of those things. I'm going to make my symbols panel visible, and then I'm just going to drag this into the symbols panel. So I'll get the following dialog. I'm going to call this marker, like so. You don't need to worry about the export type. That's all to do with Animate CC. So it's the next bit that's actually really important just here. Dynamic symbol. That's the bit you want to leave selected. Now, if you're in an earlier version of Illustrator, what you're going to have to do is create several different colored symbols for all the different things you want. But those of us in CC, what we can do is just hit OK and our symbol is created. The artwork on the artboard has been converted to an instance of that symbol. If you look in the control strip, it tells you it's an instance of marker just there. I'm going to zoom out a shade here and then I'm just going to drag that over here and then hold down the Alt or Option key and just drag a few copies of that out like so. Okay, and what I can then do, and this is the really smart bit about this, if I need different colored markers, I don't need to create all of those different symbols. What I can do is get my direct selection tool, so if I tap A here for example, and click on that blue fill, now, what I need to watch out for here, by the way, is notice in my toolbox, the fill is in back, so it's not got focus. So I'm just gonna tap X to bring that to the front like so. And once I've done that, I can just change the color by clicking in the swatches panel. And if I do this, and I'll just change each one of these to a different color like so, so I'll make that one greenish, and this one here will do this sort of magenta-ish like so. You might be thinking, well, where's the advantage in that? I could actually draw those things and it would all be good. Well, one, it depends how many different colors you've got and if they're likely to change. So if I just double click on one of these with the selection tool, if I just do that now here with this magenta one, this will take me into symbol editing mode. You can see that all of the other symbol instances are dimmed just there and that it says I'm in the marker movie clip inside of the isolation bar at the top there. If I now get my direct selection tool here and click on the bottom anchor point, and for example, make this much steeper, like so, when I get my selection tool and double click in an empty area to go out, that change is automatically applied to all of those things. So there you are, that's one way we can build smart markers to use on our maps inside of Illustrator. And that's it, we are done for now. Don't forget to subscribe, do keep watching, spread the word, reach out to me via Twitter and check out my Facebook page, all of those details coming up in just a moment. So until next time, see ya.